getting good grades gives me those sweet, sweet endorphins. And when it comes to that kind of hit, I'm not shy about getting high off my own supply or something. Okay, yeah, I didn't really think that one through. Caught up in the moment and you know I can't pretend on the plane in Arizona. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Crystal back at it again with another video. I am really excited for today's video, not only because I'm going to be sharing all my tips for how you can get that big brain energy during COVID-19 when so many of us are doing school online, but also because I was literally online school for 12 freaking years before I started at Columbia, which also just announced that for fall, all classes are online. So yeah, there's that. I've been seeing so many people making videos about online learning tips, which I think is wonderful, but honestly, at the same time, it's made me really kind of concerned just because most of the people who are making these kinds of videos are young teenagers who have only been doing school online for a couple months or so, and they're trying to help out other young teenagers who are just moving online for the first time. And so there's kind of this echo chamber that's been forming where everyone involved is really well-meaning, but just doesn't necessarily have the skills and experience to give people the very best possible tips on how to I guess, rock your online learning experience and, you know, completely understandably so. On that note, I've been making several videos lately about online learning, one of which was with one of my old professors from the Stanford University Online High School, where I attended from seventh grade to 12th grade. So you should definitely go check that out. And I also have a video on my experiences there up on my channel. So definitely go take a look at that if you want to learn more about it. And Side note, if you guys want me to make a video about my homeschooling journey since I was homeschooled online before I went to the Stanford Online High School, just drop a comment down below and I will get on that. My old teacher and I also just held a two-day free workshop on online learning like just the other week and we're also both going to be teaching online classes in our areas of expertise for the fall, which I am so incredibly excited to announce. I will put a link where you can go see them down in the description box below. And yeah, we just wanted to make sure that people had access to online classes taught by people who actually had experience in online learning and teaching because we believe that online learning should not just be a reaction to a global pandemic, but actually a proactive decision that you make because you want the flexibility of online classes or you wanna take classes with people who are amazing teachers from all across the country or even the world, or you want to take classes in a range of really cool topics that aren't offered at your school. So definitely go check those out. You guys can sign up if you want. We already have a lot of people filling up the slots, which is like so exciting. So definitely get on that if you guys want to take some classes with us. We have like creative writing, Spanish sociolinguistics, physics, all sorts of really awesome stuff. I'm so excited, you guys. Go check it out! And while you're at it, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notifications bell, and oh, comment down below any questions that you guys have about online learning. And I will answer every single one of them, I promise, even though I will do my best to answer any questions before you guys even have the chance to ask them in this here video. So let's get into it. Oh, and one last thing before we get into the video, you guys, I finally caved and made a TikTok. So it's just my name and you can go find me on there and you should definitely follow me. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for all your support. I love you guys so much. I'm so sorry to trigger you all like that, but what everybody really needs to do right now is wake up and understand that online learning is just fundamentally different from what we online school people call brick and mortar school, which is just school that takes place in a physical environment, like most of you probably experienced for most of your lives. What's more, all online learning is not created equal. You have your asynchronous, self-paced classes like you might see in a MOOC, like Coursera or edX. You have your live online classes and even complete online high schools like the Stanford Online High School with clubs and assemblies and community. Sometimes you have a combination of both. The bottom line is no matter what the format, you're gonna be more independent and you're gonna have more responsibilities, which leads us into how the heck are you supposed to handle this? Right off the bat, the absolute top tip I can give you is you're at home, so you have access to all the resources that you need. Snacks, the internet, your dog, you name it. In a bit, we're going to talk about making sure that you don't get completely distracted by all that, but first of all, I want to show you guys how to sound like you always know what you're talking about in every class. So first of all, I want you to think about what kind of class it is that you're in. Math class, chemistry, English literature, 
And then you're going to open up the best possible websites for that class as allowed by your teacher, obviously. So if you're in Spanish class, you want your online dictionary at the ready. If you're in humanities class and you're sharing your viewpoints, who wouldn't want to be able to use JSTOR or Google Scholar to quote from the premier authority on Austin or Dickens or whoever you're talking about? Need to find an example from the book you're reading but you didn't bookmark it? Get an online PDF from Project Gutenberg, Google Books, or the Internet Archive and literally just run a keyword search. And if your math teacher just went through that last and only example way too quickly for you to even screenshot it, why not have Wolfram Alpha walk you through it? Once again, this is 100% at the jurisdiction of your teachers, and you always want to be citing all your sources, even when you're just speaking in class. But used ethically and conscientiously, having the entire internet at your fingertips can be a huge lifesaver. Caught up in the moment and you know I can't pretend. So to make sure you're not getting totally behind in all your online classes and procrastinating because you don't have the teacher right there telling you when everything is due, you gotta write stuff down. I color code all my class times, office hours, and meetings in Google Calendar, so classes are in blue, office hours and meetings with teachers are in yellow, and appointments with my students for tutoring or academic consulting are in red, because in this house, we love and respect primary colors. And if you guys ever want to book an appointment with me for one-on-one -on -one online tutoring or academic consulting, college essay coaching, you name it, you can get in touch with me right here. Sometimes if I have a big assignment due, I'll also put it in Google Calendar, but since I got to Columbia, I've also been using physical planners to write down due dates and keep stuff organized. Finally, whether you're already back to school or you're going back in a few weeks, I really recommend going through all the different tabs of whatever learning management system your school uses, whether it's Canvas or CourseWorks or Haiku or something else, and check out your syllabi and figure out when you're going to have assignments due because that just might be the only time you hear about that essay or this lab report until like the day before it's due, when it's already too late to get everything done. Whether you do everything digitally or go full out with the bullet journals, write your assignments down somewhere that you will actually check and see them every day. Another thing to write down is that you need to have a reason why you want to excel in online school this year when it feels like everything has gone online, nothing matters, the world's gone to heck. Much like I imagine a parent feels when they wake up at 5 a.m. to take care of their baby. You're the parent in this scenario, which I guess makes schoolwork the baby? Anyway, those are the kind of mama bear vibes you want to embody and you need that good, good reason why in order to motivate yourself to do anything. It honestly doesn't have to be the most serious reason in the world. Like I know at this point, most of us are driven by spite and ramen and also those lemons that they're apparently feeding NYU students as side dishes. And I'm here to tell you that that's okay. Maybe not the lemons so much, but everything else. Personally, I have both really deep and high key silly reasons why I wanna get good grades. And the silly reason is my friend David and I both wanna be nominated for Phi Beta Kappa, the premier academic honor society for college students. And if David gets Phi Beta Kappa and I don't, I'm gonna feel like vaguely sad and bad about myself. So I gotta grind for those grades. On a deeper level, I wanna provide for my family. And that means everything from keeping my options open for grad school to making these YouTube videos. As you guys know, like I was just talking about before, through my company, my IB education, I do everything from academic consulting and tutoring one-on-one -on -one to essay coaching and helping you guys be guided through the college application process. And so I'm always aware that I need to be a role model for you guys and keeping up the good grades is a really big part of that. So I always am thinking about how can I make sure that I'm being the kind of person that I would wanna watch on YouTube and who I would wanna actually be tutored by. And of course, when I was in high school, I needed good grades so I could get into my dream school, Columbia. Also, you heard it here, folks. I'm outing myself as a nerd. I like school. I really love the subjects that I'm learning. I absolutely adore the vast majority of all the teachers I've ever had. Getting good grades gives me those sweet, sweet endorphins. And when it comes to that kind of hit, I'm not shy about getting high off my own supply or something, okay, yeah, I didn't really think that one through. Obviously, everyone expects that you're not gonna be around your friends and classmates in person when you're learning online for the first time, but I feel like what people don't necessarily expect is you're also not getting distracted by the kinds of things that happen when you're in that in-person environment, like whispering or people out in the hallways or stuff like that, people fidgeting and that sort of thing. 
So what that means is the kinds of distractions you actually have to deal with are super different, like your family members, or the internet, or your pets, or something like that. And so basically what that means is maybe your friends are gonna be texting you because y'all can't pass notes. So in order to try and eliminate as many of these new distractions as possible, I really recommend trying to create the cleanest, quietest, comfiest environment possible for your classes. How easy this is to do can really vary depending on factors that might be out of your control, like the amount of space you have or whether you have siblings. I recommend bribing siblings with snacks to get them to leave you alone if need be, and also making good use of do not disturb signs and locks if you really need to concentrate. It's also nice to remember that, hey, at least you have the comforts of home available to you, so why not make yourself some snacks or tea or something while you're studying? If we gotta be at home, we might as well make the best of it. A big issue a lot of people have when you're learning online is that you're on your computer, you have the entire internet in front of you, so how do you not just web surf for hours instead of doing your homework? I used to struggle a lot with this as a kid, much to my mom's chagrin, and I basically found that there are two kinds of solutions to this, what I call deep-rooted solutions and band-aid solutions. Band-aid solutions are pretty technical, like apps where you can turn off access to certain websites for a specific period of time so you can't access them while you're studying, or apps that track how much time you're spending on different websites. These can be really helpful and I definitely recommend some of them, but they do work best when they're coupled with deep-rooted solutions that really get to the heart of why you're procrastinating or why you're spending so much time on the internet. And let's be real, that's probably like every single one of us. It's me, it's you guys, it's like, I don't know, the prime minister of England. First of all, take handwritten notes. You need to get some part of your body moving and, you know, actually receiving sensory input when you're in an online class instead of just, you know, seeing how long it takes for you to turn into a literal potato. Not speaking from personal experience at all. For years, I've taken my notes in a way that's really specific to online learning. And if you're finding that your current note-taking method just isn't translating that well, then I really suggest trying this one out. I separate my notes into pre, during, and post-class notes with a special section for what I call exam notes. Pre-class notes are for reading, so if it's a textbook, I'll mark down keywords and concepts and add definitions. Then, when I finish a page, on the other side of that page, I write exam notes, which is where I work out examples and do practice problems. Sometimes I even make up types of problems that I think might be on an exam, depending on my teacher's teaching style and what they tend to emphasize, so I can practice answering them. It's so, so important to work as many sample problems as possible when you're studying because your brain makes new memories and connections through actively retrieving information instead of just looking at that information by going back over textbook passages or reading the correct answers to problems without working through them. During class notes are exactly what they sound like and I especially try not just to write down what's on the slides if your teacher is using them, but also what the teacher says that's not on the slides since that's what's so much harder to go back and check. Lots of teachers upload their slides online so you can see those whenever you want, but it's way more annoying to try and find the exact timestamp when you know your teacher said something, but you can't remember exactly what it was. When I'm taking notes during class, I draw a straight line down the middle of every page, and on the other side, that's when I come back later and write my post-class notes, which are usually on pre-recorded lectures that a teacher might upload for you to watch after class, or homework activities that you're supposed to be learning key concepts from. As I'm taking these notes, I draw arrows from one side to the other to connect what I learned in class to the homework and pre-recorded lectures. I've never actually seen any study YouTube channels use this kind of note-taking, so hopefully this can give you guys something entirely new. Another really big part of paying attention is knowing how you learn and knowing what you need to listen to and when you need to listen to it. Like, I get it. You're in your Zoom class, absolutely dying inside, and you hop on Google or TikTok. Let's be real, it's probably TikTok. Well, first of all, if that's an experience you've been having, you should definitely watch that video that I made with my teacher from the Stanford Online High School because we talk all about how not to fall into a loop of 60 second videos in self-hatred. But second of all, what you really need to do is understand how you learn so that you can figure out what you're going to prioritize paying attention to versus what is potentially unnecessary stuff that you can zone out because let's be real it's unrealistic to think that during this insane time we're all going to be absolutely perfect students who pay attention and write down every single little thing that the teacher says and never ever zone out i'm just trying to give you guys tips that are actually going to matter in your life here 
Are you a visual learner? Maybe your teacher is making use of the Zoom whiteboard and you can take screenshots of the board and title them with the timestamp of when you took that screenshot so you can return to the class recording later if you need to remind yourself of what exactly the teacher said. Maybe you're an auditory learner and you pick things up best when you're listening so you can take notes based on what the teacher is saying and doodle instead of looking at the slides the whole entire time. Since doodling is actually scientifically proven to help you focus. Maybe you're a kinesthetic or tactile learner and you learn best when you're moving, which helps your neurons form connections. So you could sit on an exercise ball in class instead of your chair, or even use a standing desk so you can fidget all you want. I mean, you have to admit, being able to fidget is a huge perk of online learning, right up there with going to school in pajamas. Or like I'm doing here, you can study outside. Study break dance parties are optional, but highly recommended. Caught up in the moment and you know I can't pretend. So I know I was literally just talking about taking handwritten notes and being all tangible and stuff, but don't forget there are also amazing online resources that can be so helpful to you guys, especially if you find yourself stuck in a class where <clears throat> you have to teach yourself all the material. <clears throat> There are some that most people already know, but I just want to mention them here just in case, like Khan Academy and Crash Course and my non-problematic fave, Quizlet. A lot of these resources explain things super simply and also gamify learning, which, once again, scientifically proven to help your neurons create connections around the material so you can remember it consistently. Personally, I'm definitely a big fan of all of these, but my learning style is actually a little bit different, so I've also found some more niche resources that should also helpfully help some of you guys out. I spent a really long time thinking that I was a visual learner, but what I eventually found is that watching lots of videos and looking at things really visually isn't actually the best way for me to learn. I'm a speed reader, so I go through reading material really quickly, which means that a lot of videos, I don't really absorb the most from them because they actually go a little bit too slowly for what I'm looking for, which is ironic because this is literally a video. I found that my preferred way of learning is to research lots of articles about whatever it is I'm working on, especially for humanities subjects. My favorite source is JSTOR, which actually just announced that they're offering free memberships for the rest of 2020, so you guys should definitely get on that because they have so many incredible journal articles and even entire books, it's not even funny. I also like Google Scholar, especially for articles about economics and scientific topics, and through Columbia I have access to a whole bunch of different library resources online too. But JSTOR and Google Scholar are open to pretty much everyone, which is amazing. There is one big caveat to this, which is that, like I said before, for quantitative subjects in particular, you don't want to just read, but also do. Which translates to, there's just no way around doing tons and tons of practice problems and actively retrieving that information from where it's stored in your brain. I've had lots of experiences by now where the problems for the midterms and finals for a class didn't match up to the textbook problems at all. So to get around that, I do practice midterms and finals or past midterms and finals from older sections of the class. And I get this by asking the TAs for my section or sometimes asking students who I know as a college student are in other sections of the same class because oftentimes they have access to past exams that have completely new and different problems to study and solve and work through. And then to figure out what's relevant, I will bring that to the TA and ask them to kind of highlight the problems for me that they think would be most important for me to practice for our specific section. I also try and take advantage of school resources like peer tutors and office hours because oftentimes the people there will have even more practice problems at their disposal. And sometimes I'll look up specific categories of problems to try and solve, like tariff problems for econ or calculating z-scores for statistics. And then finally, what I really like to do is after, and only after, not before, you take a quiz online, then you can look up the questions. And oftentimes you'll find those questions in lists on Quizlet that people have made or in these online PDFs. And they'll also contain not just the questions from your exam, but also more questions that weren't on your test, but that you can now have access to, to practice and work through because they're in the same section that you're trying to study. And it's amazing and I love it. And you guys should all definitely try it out. Caught up in the moment and you know I can't pretend. When it comes to online learning, the degree of independence is so freaking far removed from what you might be used to at your brick and mortar school that you actually have no choice but to learn who the heck you are. I remember when I was in middle school and high school and I was learning online, my mom was quite strict about the kind of music that my sister and I were allowed to listen to while studying. Just classical instrumental music. That was it. 
which is fine because I actually really like classical music. I've been a classically trained musician for 15 years, so it's all Gucci. But when I got to college and even like senior spring of high school, when college apps were done and I was able to really relax a little bit, I experimented a little and I found that I can actually concentrate just as well listening to music with lyrics as when I'm listening to classical music. Basically, I can listen to anything that isn't like total screamo. I've been having some issues with logging into my Spotify account lately. So now I just throw on one of those YouTube mixes about being the main character in your own life and I'm good to go. It might be different for you guys because for a lot of people listening to music with lyrics really is distracting, but you have to find that out for yourself, which is the message of this video, because what works for you might be different from me or your friends or your parents. And sometimes when studying just gets to be way too much and you start having all these intrusive thoughts like, hmm, maybe this pandemic will never end. Maybe my teacher will never learn how to work breakout rooms in Zoom. Maybe that one kid will never stop unmuting himself accidentally. Maybe I should have shelled out the cash for my high school yearbook so I could look back on those sweet, sweet memories of being in classes with people and teachers who actually wanted to be there and learn and teach online. Okay, maybe that last one is just me, but there comes a time when you have to remember that it's okay to take a break. And I don't mean just any break. No, no, no. You can watch Avatar and play Animal Crossing anytime you like, but sometimes you have to take a targeted break to remember that learning can and should be fun and to reconnect with something that you actually enjoy learning about. For me, you guys know I'm a big creative writing person and I'm actually planning on making a video soon on how I published my writing in high school, so be on the lookout for that. So that's it, you guys. If you watched this video to the end, it would absolutely 100% mean the world for me if you liked, subscribed, and hit that notification bell, and also shared this video with your friends, because friends help friends, we're all in this online learning thing together. I love you guys, I'm here for you. Comment your best online learning strategies down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!